Building an edge AI audio classification model involves collecting and labeling a lot of real-world data, an often tedious and time-consuming task. Imagine listening through hours of recorded data looking for sounds of snoring or that particular machine failure sound. What if there is someone or something that can do it for you? Edge Impulse's new automatic audio labeling transformation block is built just for that. It integrates with Hugging Face to automatically label your audio dataset in minutes, saving you significant time and effort. In this video, I'll show you how to harness this feature to quickly and efficiently label your audio dataset. Okay, so to demonstrate um, what this feature might be helpful for, I came up with a model use case. Say you have a factory, and in this factory, there is a machine or machines that make a particular sound when they are in a certain state. Whether this state is faulty or is just some particular state that makes the sound, we want to be able to identify this by audio. So in the end, the idea is that whatever we will build will be deployed on some device that runs on this factory, and when hearing this particular sound, it can indicate, okay, this is what we're looking for. To build such a model, we need to build a data set that consists of a lot of samples of this particular event. But it's not always easy to know exactly when to record this to collect our data because these events occur sporadically. We don't know when this machine goes into this state. Um, we can have, like here, a few samples. So we know how it sounds, but for example here I have 18 uh, samples of um, this event. This will not be enough to train a classifier for my use case, but it's enough to know for me what this sounds like. So let's let's look at it. Some some damage sound. So okay. So it's a very clear um, some very clear metal damage sound. So <clears throat> now. What we're going to do with this transform block is use a large foundation model that's hosted on Hugging Face that's called AST fine-tuned on audio set. So this model is already trained and it can detect a certain uh, set of classes that is trained on. It's trained on audio set which is a data set from Google that um, can distinguish between 527 different labels. You see music, speech, vehicle, and all sorts of different different ones. So this is what this model knows. The question is how can we leverage its knowledge of those 527 classes to understand what this is? So knowing these are the error states, I'm going to go, go to data sources, add a new data source, transformation block, and here you will see a block called Automatic Audio Labeling with Audio Spectrogram Transformer, which is that model. Yeah, it has a few parameters. Um, labels of interest will leave for now. So if we leave the parameters with none, uh, it means that the labels that we will get for the samples will be whatever this model thinks it is. So it doesn't, it doesn't know about how we want to call it, but if this sounds to it, like music, it will say music. And then the second parameter, window size. We will put zero, which means that each individual sample in your data set will receive one label. That's what we want. We just want to know what this model thinks our error sounds like from what it knows. So let's go ahead and kick off this job. And we will see how it performs. We see that we receive some of the um, predictions from this big model. So these labels, hammer, speech, ding, tools, all of these labels exist in audio set. So we just get all of these labels. And if we look back at our data set right now, we'll see that each of the samples now has a label. OK, so what we did right now is we found out in models, in the big models language, what our error sounds like. Great, so the samples are the same. What we want to do now is say, okay, let's 
I know that the model thinks <laughs> these are my errors, I will write down these uh, the, no the names of these classes. And I have already done this before. So there's some different ones that we will see, hammer. So we'll take those labels and now we say, okay, so now we know what our error sounds like. As a second part, I have prepared a larger data set of 24 minutes and it consists of samples that are longer. It's there are 20 to 30 seconds. So this is what you would have access to if you wanted to build this. You would just collect larger samples. You don't know what is in these samples. You know that in some of them, this error has occurred and your goal is to listen to all of them, find when it occurs and say, oh, okay, this is my error and label it with the error. But before you do that, you have no idea. Now I have to listen through 24 minutes of audio, hoping to hear the sound. What I've done, I've prepared uh, label the samples that I know um, contain this damaged sound, but the rest is sampled from um, some background noise. So it's just some factory noises. I don't know if this error also occurred there. So that's a really cool thing. Now, in your case, you would not know for all of them, but for some of them, I know for a fact that this error exists there. But for some of them, so let's see. What I'm going to do now is go in this project again to data sources, add another data source, select the same transformation block. But now I'm going to specify the labels of interest. It says here, list of labels from audio set that will be used to label the sample. When model returns any other label, the label in edge impulse will be set to noise. So that's exactly what we want. We want to highlight only the times when what we heard before occurs and the rest we're not interested in. So I'm going to take those labels that I saw before, put them here, and then I will tell this block that if it hears any of those, call it damage. I, I'm not interested whether it's a hammer or a chink clink or whatnot, because these are just generic um, labels from audio set. I know that in my case, it means damage. Um, and I'm going to take each of those large samples of 20, 30 seconds and provide a running multi-label for each of them. So I'm going to go over those samples with a window of four seconds with a stride of two seconds. Um, okay, well, we're ready to go. Let's just start this and see what happens. Okay, so it started classifying for each sample now. It gets multiple labels and then it sees if in either of those labels, oh, well, let me go back to the data set. Either of those labels contain what we're interested in. Okay. So now we see for this 26 second sample, it actually contains the sound of the error we're interested in. So let's see. Okay, so it should be around four second mark. Let's go again, it's loading. Two, three. Okay, so this is our damage. It, it occurred in this event. After this, it stopped. But what is interesting is that the samples that I put and I didn't attach any noise that I did myself, it actually detected some damage as well. So let's hear it out. I didn't know about it. So it also can happen that in your case, you discovered that in some moments where you didn't know something happened, it actually did. Okay. So sort of this hammery sound appeared there and perhaps in the end. Yeah. So it is indeed similar to the sound that um, my error uh, sounds like. Now, what I have here is it doesn't mean that, okay, there is actually damage that happened there. It means that maybe it did. Now I know that 
I can review instead of listening throughout the whole sample, I can listen to those two segments and decide for myself whether this actually is damage or not. So maybe this one is just someone working in the background, but this one actually is. So after I receive the labels that I'm uh, proposed from the um, big model, I can go, where was that sample? I can go press edit labels and actually say this damage is not um, is not damage. It's going to be noise. That's it. Okay. So I listened to it and I decided that this is not what I'm interested in, but this actually is. And we will see that all the samples in our data set will receive this structured label and show us where something occurred. Now, what we have now is labeled data that we can use for training the model that will be classifying this damage noise without having to listen through, in this case, 24 minutes, but um, in actual scenarios, it can be hours and hours of data uh, of different sample sizes. It's done automatically for us. How cool is that? So yeah, that's it. After this, you have a fully labeled data set that uh, you can use to build a model that will distinguish this particular sound that you're interested in.